Welcome back to another episode from Tailors with Love. It's my great pleasure to introduce Gareth Llewellyn. Gareth is the re-founder of Reynolds Sunglasses. How are we doing today, Gareth? Very good, thank you very much. Excellent, good to have you in. Also joining us, friend of the show, you know him, Remit Van Brahm from Bond Lifestyle, Watch ID, but perhaps more pertinently for this show, Sunglasses ID. How are you doing today, Remit? Very good, Pete. Thanks for having me on. Great, thank you. Well, thank you both for joining us. Gareth, let's get into it with you first. Um, perhaps just give us a little thumbnail sketch of you and talk to me about Reynolds Sunglasses, please. Yes, okay. Well, um, my background is technology. Um, I run a, a wearables uh, company, um, electronic wearable company in, in California. Um, and um, I basically, as, as, a, as a side hobby, I uh, I was very much into 60s films, late 60s films in particular. And um, I think that was because, you know, I'm of that age. And um, particularly in 2013, I was watching the Italian job again, as many people do. And um, I saw the sunglasses in the beginning of the film and decided, right, well, I really want a pair of those. And... Um, so I went online and I started to look around and ask people what they were. And of course it came back as saying, yeah, it's, a, it's the uh, Renault Ford Mustang Spectacular. But you try and find a pair of those. I mean, it's absolutely crazy to try and find a pair of those. So what happened was something really weird is that I started collecting Renault sunglasses. Um, just, you know, all of the Renault sunglasses from that period from... What, what turned out to be 1961 to about 73. And um, I, I, I did it sort of clandestinely. So effectively, um, uh, it, was, it was a very odd situation, I have to say, um, that um, I started collecting them and putting them in drawers here to the point where my wife didn't know I was collecting them and I was buying lots and lots and lots of these things. And eventually I got to one of the largest collections of Reynolds sunglasses in the world. I've got 120 pairs now oh, of wow. every type of conceivable thing on all I was looking for initially were these sunglasses from the, um, from the Italian job. And uh, I couldn't find them. And then in January, 2019, a guy calls me from um, Sonoma in, San Francisco and says, look, I've got a pair of these Reynolds sunglasses and uh, do you have the side skirts for these? Uh, what, we, what we now call the quarter lights, basically the quarter lights. And um, I said, no I, no, I don't, but I'll buy them off you. <laughs> so I offered him, I, he said, well, how much? And um, I said, well, you know, uh, I'll give you 500 bucks for them because I knew immediately that they were worth a hell of a lot of money. And so um, I bought them and he subsequently told me that he'd paid $20 for them in a thrift shop. And, and I got, by that time, I'd, I'd got quite a big website up and somebody offered me 10,000 pounds for these. These are the original sunglasses. These nice. ones, and you can hear that they're quite rattly and quite old. And the reason they're old, and the reason they hadn't survived for so long, was effectively that the hinges just broke. So, yeah, that's how I got into Reynolds. Interesting, Remit. Um, I can for the people watching on YouTube, you can see a couple of cars behind you. You're a you're a big Italian job guy as well. And uh, maybe you can just talk a little bit about your affinity with uh, the Italian job, and especially these sunglasses in the film. Um, well, yeah, for me, Renault now is, of course, known uh, mostly because of the, uh, the sunglasses that are worn in the famous opening sequence of the Italian job um, of the, you know, the shot of the Lamborghini Miura uh, pictured here as well for the people that can see is the red or orangey um, gold Lamborghini Miura that it's driven um, through the Alps and uh, eventually crashes and the, the, the driver of the car looks just uber cool and he puts on uh, halfway to scene these, these, these stunning, uh, of course, sunglasses that make him even more cool. Um, and at the end of the scene, when the car is pushed off the cliff, um, you see the sunglasses laying on the side of the road and they get stepped on by the mafia. Um, but uh, the, the sunglasses, of course, make a huge impact as, as they're part of the, the uber cool scene from the 60s. 
Um, so that's how I, I, I know the brand. And um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's amazing that they're uh, now being remade because um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of classic 60s sunglasses that you see in films and, and come back. But these ones, um, I guess, were out of the picture for a while. So um, yeah, nice. it's good to see them back. Gareth, can you perhaps touch upon how the process of refining a brand? I mean, I, I don't want to kind of chase ahead, but maybe you can just talk about you want to now establish the brand. You, you've obviously you're into the glasses. You found some. What are the uh, what are the red tapes and the hurdles that you had to go through to get a, a brand off the ground again? Um, well, to anyone that's in thinking about doing this, I'd say <laughs> don't. <laughs> right. Um, the basically what happened was that as soon as somebody had offered me a lot of money for those sunglasses I knew that there was a big market for this and the market touches on you know very very distinct emotions and so what happened to me was that I decided that this brand needed to be seen again because there was clearly a demand for it and if I liked it then a lot of other people would like it so I went out to try and find the trademarks again. That was the first thing I did, was to find out where the trademarks were and you know in what countries they were available and that sort of thing. And so the first thing I did was buy the one in the UK, uh, which was available. And then I bought the one in France, which was available. And then I went through the very long process of buying the one in America. And where do you go to buy trademarks, Gareth? Well, um, it's, that's a long story. First of all, if you go to the patent office, there's a part on the patent office called trademarks. So you can go there and then do a, pat a trademark search to find out whether someone's already got that trademark and in what class. So there are different classes and, and the class that we're dealing with here is class nine, international class nine, which is basically goggles and spectacles and that sort of thing. And someone had had the Reynolds sunglasses brand until 2016. But what happens with a lot of these old brands is that, that they, they go into troll houses. So people will buy them in the hope that ah, like cyber squatting on a domain them. name, right? OK. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it is very mm. much like that. And um, they let it lapse in 2016. So I, I just bought the trademarks. But that I thought, oh, yes, well, now I own a brand. But no you own a name you don't own the brand and the brand takes years literally years and years and maybe decades to re-establish itself as a brand rather than just a name these are very distinct things here and um what happened to us was was quite extraordinary really was that once i had opened the pandora's box of renault um, we found that the brand had been supported by almost every 60s star that existed. You know, we, 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 we couldn't believe how many people had actually worn the Reynolds sunglasses in the 60s. And of course, the company itself had disappeared in, in 1981 when they went bust. So for 40 years, this had been basically left just out in the cold. Right. And so once you have the trademarks, uh, do you get anything else with that? I mean, like no. kind of get any archival footage no. or any old, no, no nothing. So you, you're what, we to had to do, what we had to do was something which, again, I would not advise anyone who hasn't got deep pockets to do is to, to go out and find someone to manufacture something that's first of all, nearly 50 years old and is got um, bends in, three dimensions and we'll need a five axis milling machine to make. Uh, we tried three companies in the UK over six months to try to make that pair of sunglasses. Nobody could do it. Uh, we had it 3D printed, 3D scanned. We, we tried everything to do it. And in the end, I had to go to the people that make Chanel and um, Celine sunglasses in Italy to do it. And even then, it took six months for them to work out how to do it. <laughs> wow. And it's, 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 you know, just buying the name, I thought, oh yes, we'll, that'll be fine. You're off and running, you know, yeah. 
it's just so is, is, there, is there not like um if you would find an old building that's dilapidated an old factory there might be stuff inside like boxes with like blueprints or things is there not somewhere um a reno archive that somebody kept somewhere with with like um prototypes or even like old stock or um, is, was there anything physical left of the brand that you can did you did you try to find that well, yes, we did. I mean, I ran a website for Reynolds uh, nerd, Nerds, basically, which got a huge amount of traffic from 2015. And I accumulated an enormous amount of information about Reynolds. Uh, like, who actually designed these things, um, where the original patents were. Um, you know, it... it, it I've got a f phenomenal amount of information, but nobody, I mean, the factory had been defunct in Reno in, in Nevada for, for, for you know, um, 40 years. So there was nothing there, it all gone. Um, the only thing that was still knocking about was the, um, the Arama lens um, mold, supposedly, although I've never seen it, which is over in, in America. And that is the that, that is the base lens. See, the, the base of this lens or the curvature of this lens is sort of between 11 and 14. I mean, it's 14 here and 11 here. Mm. Very, very difficult, very difficult lens to make. Um, and certainly you can't find many people that will do it today, actually. Um, but that apparently still exists, although I've never seen it. I've just heard that someone's got it, but I've never seen it. Interesting. Gareth, perhaps you can touch upon, so you've, you've got the brand, it's now, you know, I guess you're trying to create awareness around this brand. And now that you've got it off the ground, you've got the prototype, everything, everything looks to be going. Maybe you can talk about some sensitivities that you might have to face now that you try and align it with, say, the glasses from the Italian job or the glasses that Elvis wore. I mean, were there any sensitivities around those issues? Well, there certainly were, were what, what happened was momentum. On, um, on Christmas Eve 2019, I was contacted by Fritz Kaiser through another guy called Olivier Namesh. Now, Fritz Kaiser owns the original Lamborghini Miura, and, and he, he was really interested. He said, you know, you can come and do the photo shoot with this car. <laughs> And, and I mean, I just couldn't believe that for a Christmas present. It was just the most <laughs> extraordinary thing ever to happen to me. And so we went out there in January, um, sort of late January to where the car is and did a photo shoot, which a lot of it's on the, on the website actually, but there's, there's an enormous archive that I'm holding on to from, from that time. And the sensitivity was, was gone effectively then because we had the car we had the glasses and we had the video mm. of the glasses being reunited with the car 50 years on that's amazing. And, and for me amazing. that was a, a moment which where there was a few tears in my eyes actually when i sat in that car going down the the alps mm. I, I couldn't quite believe that i'd managed to make these things again <laughs> and put them back in the car and <laughs> and i don't think fritz did either really i think it was just a ridiculous how can somebody, uh, you know, how, how can you sort of um, get there? I mean, bearing in mind that I'd never been in the fashion industry before or, or made any sunglasses before, and I'm a technologist. So it was just a completely surreal experience. And it must have been a real killer blow for Fritz when you also crushed it with the digger and then sent it off the cliff as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, that's probably not what he signed up for when he invited you over to the Alps. So. <laughs> I, I, I have to say that um, it didn't even cross the mind and, and the car being worth what it is today, which is, you know, obviously several, 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 several millions of, of euros. Um, that wasn't even going to happen. But I mean, I... I Going back to the colour, I think that was the other thing that, that shocked mm -hmm. me a little bit, was that the colour is actually slightly different now than it was then. It, it's right. supposed to be the same colour, but when you watch the film, you'll see that it's more red than it is orange. Um, yeah. When you get in, when you're in front of a car and you're looking at it, it's more orange, actually. And I think there is a slight change that happened. It's, it's not significant, but... Um, and, and, and the nerdiness... Sorry, go 
So if you, um, if you look at your uh, brand and uh, the connection with the car, but also the movie, um, are, you, are you focusing more in marketing on, on sort of the car fans or more the movie fans? What, what is your direction there? Well, there are, there are in fact three very distinct areas that the brand has fallen into. And what you're watching at the moment, it's actually happening at the moment. So this is like sort of what we, what we found was that initially the Italian job was the thing that pulled the brand back up to any type of status. I engaged with a big brand company in the US who could see that this was going to be an ultra luxury brand. That's where we placed this because of the quality that we could make this, these sunglasses of today. But um, we broke it into three distinct areas. Okay, so uh, uh, effectively the automotive area, which is the classic car. I've got a, you know, a nice car that I want to put some sunglasses with and very specifically customized to that, com that car. So we'll put the chassis number in, we'll put the model number in, we'll put anything you want in those sunglasses. Ah, okay. Custom, okay. custom, uh, custom made. Okay. Uh, in, the, in, in the frame. That's the, that's the first one. The second one is very much the celebrity film star marketplace. And that's why mm -hmm. Susan George then came on board to do, to be an ambassador for me because I was a fan of hers in the sixties and seventies. And um, quite fortuitously, I, I, I started a conversation with her over social media, which then led to her becoming the ambassador. And there are other cinema stars that are in line to become ambassadors for us over the next, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the next few, few, few months. And then the, the third one, which is a really weird one, is the music industry. And okay. because Elvis wore them, there's been an enormous amount of people that have contacted me from certainly from the LA music market that want to use the, the particularly the 61s, which are the these ones, which are the the sort of Elvisy Elvisy mm -hmm. type ones. Um, yeah, they're very cool. Yeah. So so that that market is we haven't really done very much in that market yet, but we're we're really looking for the sort of the next face in music. So that's that. Those are the three areas. Yeah. And so the, the sunglasses you produced, um, are they, some of them I saw are, are limited edition, but for example, the, the 61 you just showed seems to be like a great item to just keep um, producing forever because it's such an yes. iconic piece. Um, are there only certain ones limited edition or the whole model is, is going to be limited? Well, what we've done, what we've tried to do is because again of my nerdiness, I've studied the sunglasses over the whole of the 60s. So they, they started, they started, so this, they started at that level of depth, mm -hmm. okay, which is about 41, mm. and they went through to 43, oh. and yeah. then they went through to 45 at the end, and, and quite a few in between. And so what we found was that, for example, in the automotive industry, Jim Clark, uh, the three times world champion. He only wore Reynolds. He only mm -hmm. wore the Reynolds sunglasses. And so wow. we're, we're looking now to do, you know, that model for him, specifically for them. And so what we're finding is that we're creating collaborations with stars and cars. So, so when mm -hmm. I, I don't really want to be in the Luxottica marketplace where we are pumping out millions of sunglasses, we want to be very, very concise. Um, we call ourselves the Rolex of sunglasses. We're moving towards making sunglasses more jewelry than, than actual sunglasses. And I, th I think that, you know, we've only made 200 of these this season. So these are very, very sought after at the moment. Um, and well, they're also very practical because in a way they're um, more practical probably than the, than the, the Rossano because it's um, sort of more like a shield glasses. So I also read that you, yeah. you originally saw them a lot on um, airline pilots. Because exactly. actually of their practicality, not just of their fashion. Uh, uh, very much so, very much so. If I put the, the, the actual, <laughs> the Italian job sunglasses on, you'll see you you will not get not noticed with these <laughs> anyway. All right, these are you. 
you, you really will get noticed. And, and I think that people that buy these have a very specific purpose. One person's bought four of them um, just because he's a collector and you know he's got a collection of cars and he wants one for each car. What I'm finding is that this is the market that um, pe people buy that particular one for. But for example, the 61 and the bikini, particularly for the bikini for the ladies, is very much, um, you know, it's a very much more mainstay, if I can call it that. Although this exactly. I, I, I could almost see the bikini and the 61 be more, slightly more affordable and more aimed at a, at a younger audience and an audience that maybe is more into the fashion slash uh, film stars uh, look. Uh, and the other one more for like, like you said, uh, old, uh, older, not old, but older uh, classic car owner, let's say, yeah. or, or like really, really high end car uh, owner, collector. So, um, yeah, because uh, I think the, the 61 is, like I said, it's very cool. And also Johnny Depp is wearing them in, uh, uh, in the Run Diaries. Um, not that recent, but re relatively recent. Oh, really? It looks really great I on him. Um, the cinema. Yeah. He got, he's wearing um, one of these. He got the writer back from, is it with Nail and I? Something Robinson. He got the writer back to actually write that. But the, the writer, whose name, I think it's something Robinson, uh, said, look, I, I can't write screenplays anymore because I don't drink anymore. And, and Johnny Depp said, well, <laughs> look, you need to write this film for me because you know no one else can do it you're my guy and so like the, the writer of the film had to go and tell his wife oh i need to start drinking again and get absolutely hammered to, to smash this shit <laughs> let's get back on the wagon yeah and i don't know if he managed to give it up since but yeah. johnny Depp encouraged this guy to stop his uh anyway i i, I digress um Remit, i was going to ask you about uh, sunglasses and the, the kind of overall feel of sunglasses in a community. I remember you saying once when we were talking about watches in films, you're saying there's not really the community that there is, say, if you look at the Bond community where everything is kind of scrutinized and there's loads of people chipping in with different clothes, cars, there's a real kind of ingrained community in that. But watches don't really have, people don't really study watches in films as closely. It's, what about sunglasses in films? Is there a big community with sunglasses in films compared to say watches in the Bond? No, I think it's a different different type of product. Like the watches, watches itself are just like a sort of big collecting. Like there's a whole world around watches. It's it's a it's a it's a huge thing. Um, extremely valuable, very uh, emotional uh, product. And uh, James Bond has a whole um, lifestyle around it, and and followers from from a young age. I think sunglasses are more sort of um, uh, they're definitely a, a huge lifestyle element, a way to show yourself. They're a very big accessory, especially for men. Something unique they can show themselves with but they wouldn't be passionate about maybe too much like the whole world around it, but they would go for a specific um, look, let's say, uh, inspired um, a lot of times by uh, celebrities wearing them or movie stars um, or uh, sports figures. So it's, it's, but I would say it's more like, um, like, a, like a, uh, people come maybe once to the website to find a specific pair and then that's what they want, you know, or maybe a second time, but they, they don't stay on, every day to see what new sunglasses are now in a movie, you know, like right. it's a very, it's a more specific, but, but the people are highly motivated to buy certain sunglasses because of a connection with something. So um, in that sense, it's very uh, emotional and very, um, you know, connected to things, but there, there's not a sunglasses owners club, not too many, I would say. And who, what contemporary actors are around nowadays that people go, well, he's a sunglasses icon. So like, for example, Jack Nicholson's always going to be mine from yesteryear, perhaps. Well, and still today, but, the actors coming out now are there any of that other the flag bearers for um yeah there's there's like gary oldman he's not that young but like he always has a certain type of uh eyeglasses or sunglasses uh there, there's just a few types um uh robert downey yeah. jr i think you showed me some glasses yeah for the iron, iron man, man yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, stuff like that i mean it's actually almost every actor that wears sunglasses it's, it's really big but some some actors wear regular glasses uh like ryan reynolds for example where wears his own you know as, as, as normal glasses on so he's always pictured with glasses so I, I think a lot of people find inspiration with those kind of people um but i mean because almost every actor wears sunglasses in movies it, it, it would be you know every cool actor basically you know tom cruise uh, anyone that wears something cool it, yeah it, it could be popular yeah sorry to uh this this isn't really <laughs> much competition for you oh i don't have them oh, yeah, I do it here. This isn't any competition to you, Gareth, but these are the, uh, the Tom Cruise sunglasses that I went to your site uh, and find. Uh, there you go, there you out, go. Out of oblivion, but then I found out I bought the wrong ones. <laughs> 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 they're oh, they're the, same, the same type. They're the same type, yeah. Anyway. 
but yeah, that's uh, that's that's my little collection. Um, Gareth, thanks so much for joining us. Um, appreciate you and Remit joining us today. You guys have got a weekend to get on with, so uh, I'll let you crack on. Um, but Reynold, the brand, and for people that need to spell that, R E N A U L D dot co dot uk is where the place can find and have a look at those wonderful images of the Lamborghini in the Alps. Uh, really jealous of that model that got that gig. <laughs> I mean, is he a friend of yours or was he just someone hired for the shoot? Who? Oh, the, the, the model. Yeah, he was just hired for the shoot, actually. But yeah, um, we Those all are the sort of emails you like. In there. We all got in there and drove in it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> yeah, some great imagery. I look forward to, like you say, you've got some more to come. So that's, um, that's going to be exciting. Uh, and Remo. Uh, sunglasses hyphen id we'll put it all over on the show notes people i'm sure will, will be familiar but thanks again for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend guys great talking to you super